Oh man. <laughs> All right, so 500 degrees. What do we got over here? 570, oh, five, 530. Three thirty and three oh two. Okay, so uh, all the brakes appear to be, I think, locked up. Uh, I may be wrong, but I don't think brakes get that hot. But uh, anyway, I went for a ride just to kind of drive it. The, uh, the weather, you know, it's kind of warm. Just wanted to go for a ride. Uh, the car's been leaking brake fluid. I haven't gotten the chance to look at it. Went for a ride, said low brake fluid. I should have checked, but I got it home, but I got, you know, halfway through my ride and the car just wasn't moving anywhere. The brakes are pretty much applied. Um, the pedals had a very soft feel and yeah, so something's wrong with the brake system on this car. Uh, I don't know what too low a fluid would do when it comes to locking them up. I would think it'd be the opposite. So it could be two separate issues, but I know for sure I gotta do something about that leak and then something is, I think something's wrong with the um, the master because if all four are locked up, I think something's going. So I'm gonna have to do some research. Uh, this wasn't even intended to be filmed today, but I figured I'd, I'd get you guys with the thermal gun. So we will pick this back up in a couple days. So it might be hard to hear me, but uh, I got the car in the garage. I was gonna mess with it, but I decided to. So I was reading through some forum threads and it seems that everyone that has a 24 valve E30 and did the uh, brake boost to relocation, meaning moved it over like I did instead of getting a new one, have kind of run into this issue. And there's a lot of different things. It could be a, the clevis is uh, not moved over. That's not my case, I moved mine over. Something could be binding, rubbing. I checked that, I think that's all good. But I had another guy with a thread who had the exact same issue, like word for word, and then found that he recalled that when he put the uh, master back into the booster, the rod came out of the uh, booster. And apparently if that happens, it means your booster went bad or you broke it. And that is what happened. And I kind of jammed it in there. I don't know if it's in there right, because it was loose. Allegedly, it's, 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 as soon as something like that happens, it's not good anymore. Ooh, look at that, new camera. Uh, so this is a weird shot, I know, but Anyway, I got the uh, new camera from Stu, so shout out to Stu. Hooked it up on the uh, the G7, so I'm pretty stoked. So I figured why not break it in and go ahead and uh, continue this brake booster job with the uh, the new G7. See how things look. Uh, I'm still learning settings on this. I'm hoping that uh, this all comes out all right. Uh, I'm really hoping that. I think it should. I, uh, I did a little bit of waiting and I got myself a brand new brake booster here. Um, it's ATE, and then I got uh, reservoir seals, booster to master seal, and uh, the cap seal, so one of those three was probably leaking. But uh, my only discrepancy here, which is kind of also a big deal, is OEM 89E30s come with girling. Uh, so it's a girling master and a girling booster. And they say that the master and booster are supposed to match. And some people said back in the day they don't intertwine because I decided to not buy a new uh, master because they're expensive and I really don't think I need one. So I opted for, and you can only buy the ATE by the way. You cannot find the girling anymore. So I'm gonna be mixing and matching. You guys will hear first if it, uh, first hand you guys will hear if it works or not. I think it will, I've read that it does. So we shall see. But I'm gonna get right into it. First off, gonna start off, gotta pull off the intake booth, the MAF. Um, this uh, vacuum and then uh, undo the uh, clutch line, I'm going to undo the brake lines, get the master out and then I'm going to attempt to get those nuts that hold the booster into the car, those are going to be a pain in the ass, but uh, yeah. So I had the, um, I think it was the brightness turned off, I, I was noticing that I was filming, it looked really bright, should be better now, I don't know if that was bad or not, I was going to refilm but I think I'm alright. So I turned the brightness back down to right in the middle. So. I don't know, everything looks pretty good from, from this thing. It looks way better than the GoPro, so you guys let me know, but I'm pretty stoked. So I actually found the uh, leak. Uh, you probably can't see, but it is in fact coming from the seal 
right there where the reservoir goes into the uh, master. Uh, I put my hand back there and it's completely dripping down the, uh, the side of the master there all from that seal, you can kind of see some seepage. And then from there it's dripping onto the subframe where then it's dripping down to the ground. That would explain why the leak was more towards the middle of the car, but I was super confused because I knew it was brake fluid. So that was a little bit perplexing, but we have figured it out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and drain all the uh, brake fluid out of here so it's not a huge mess. So I'm not sure what I was thinking when I reinstalled this booster with this like this. Like, I mean you could pull the shaft completely out and uh, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in there, sit, flush, or not flush, but not supposed to move. It's not supposed to pop out, it's not supposed to wiggle, it's supposed to be like that. I had no idea that it was supposed to be like that. I thought that I just knocked it out of place not realizing that like I completely like broke it out of position like I mean I don't know if you could reseat this maybe you could but um oh gosh zoom I don't I don't know how to work this camera with a zoom um anyway whatever that booster shot could I get it to work again I don't know but uh I don't care so there goes that everything else is out a little bit of a mess but uh now I'm ready to uh go ahead and do the uh, inside firewall to get the booster out and I'm a little nervous because I don't know how to go about this just the way it's jammed in there I won't have much room to pull it out and up so we'll see but I don't think I'll have to pull this off if I do then I'm gonna sell the car just kidding but I don't want to do that so I'm gonna go inside the car I don't know if I'm gonna be able to set up this camera in there I might have to go back to the GoPro for this inside shot or you know what I'm gonna save you guys that boringness you guys know the four firewall things I'm not even going to mess with those. I'm not even going to set the camera in there because it's really hard when you're... Because my whole body has to be in there. So I'll be back to you guys once those are unbolted and we're popping this bad boy out. I'm going to get her out here and see what it gets caught on. Okay. So... We got it out. And it's first off stuck on the clutch line. Move that. Alright, so it's all gone wacky, so you can see I got the carp in the air. Uh, I could not for the life of me get this booster out with this manifold in place. So basically it left me with two options. Pull the manifold off, which is a huge pain in the ass in this car because the way this harness is wedged here, I can't get to the last thing there. Uh, I thought about just slightly lifting it, but still, can't get to that bolt. I don't remember how I got to it the first time. but. What I did was, when I remembered when I was raising the engine, I actually unbolted the motor mount. You probably can't see that right there. Unbolted it and I jacked up the motor uh, to tilt it so that this side is higher. Because all I need to be able to do is get the, get the booster to clear this bottom part of the manifold right here. And then I can slide it. Because that's the way to put it in is kind of angle it like that. So, this is my last ditch effort. I raised the motor about as high as it will let itself go. So we're gonna see if I can if I can get her out. I gave myself a pretty decent amount of room, so I I, I think I might be able to get it. But uh, yeah, I mean, otherwise, if I had left this in place, I maybe could have pulled the clevis off. But I still want to make sure that I thread it on the right length on that. Dude or not, it actually worked. Uh, I uh, I had to really kind of jam it towards the starter, and I ended up hitting it on the starter somehow, grounding out the starter. Bunch of sparks. I got super scared for a second, but uh, so I went and disconnected the battery, but we managed to get this bad boy out. Thank God I did not want to pull that manifold off, so that kind of sucked. Hopefully I can get this one in without damaging it, but uh, basically right now what I got to do now 
is first off compare these and make sure that they are the same. Um, they look look to me like they're the same because uh, if this if this is literally millimeters bigger, it will not fit, which is what sucks. But um, I think they're about the same. This will thread on here, and then aside from that, then everything else should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those over real quick. Nothing uh, nothing interesting there. And then we're gonna carefully put that bad boy in the E30. I got the booster ready to go in. I got the clevis on. I got the uh, vacuum on. The vacuum port on the new one was smaller, so it was actually a big pain in the ass getting it in. I had to put a little bit of lube on there. But uh, clevis went on, the threads were all the same. So now is, uh, it's go time to try to get this bad boy in. I'm, I can't even remember how I pulled the other one out, so. All right, well, it is many, many, many hours later. Uh, it has all gone wrong, you could say. So, like I said, I lifted the engine up to get access to it, and then the booster's in, of course. Uh, everything went there, went in good. Uh, but when it came time to lowering the motor, if you guys aren't familiar, these Condor mounts, just lining it up an M50 uh, with the E36 arms on these mounts is a pain in the ass. You honestly need the motor completely suspended on both sides. You need to lower one side first. Uh, when I lifted it one side, it kind of tipped it that way and made it so that it would not line up. And I just could not get the thread started. I finally got it started after flipping it. So instead of the bolt going down, it now goes up. But I have found out that the booster dimensions were just a tad bit different. And you can see we are now hitting the booster on the manifold. So that is not good, which means I have to lift the motor back up, which is going to be a huge pain in my ass. And then I got two options here, and I'll probably actually do both of these options. So I want to shave down the fin a little bit more because then we'll be all right. But on top of shaving down the fin, I had another washer or two. And then that'll bring this side up off the thing. And then plus with the shave down fin, then we should be clear. And that'll give me extra oil pan clearance, which isn't a bad thing either. So, But uh, it was a two-person job. Thank God Eustace was here. Um, I'm just so irritated right now. Like, I mean, a brake booster job in a car, whatever. But put it in a car, put an engine in a car that's not supposed to be in that car. And the brake booster job turns into 300 other things because you got to move so much stuff around. I had to undo the starter. It's... Disaster! I wasn't trying to be out here till 10 o'clock on a Sunday, but whatever. So I'll pick this back up. Probably, in a, I probably think I'm pretty busy with school, so probably like Thursday I'll pick it back up, um, and I'll go get that stud, and then I'll I'll catch you guys back up. So I really hope the booster was the issue, because if I did all this for nothing, I'd be pissed. But I'll catch you guys in a couple days. All right. So I just ran to Home Depot, and what I got was a longer stud for the uh, motor mount because this one was turning out to be too short. Finally got the motor mounts back in place uh, So like I said, I tried to raise this side a little bit more that does not work The slightest difference in height will not let that other motor mount sit properly It was all angled even still it's I mean you got to go back and forth You got to do a little bit of tight a little bit of tight I mean it's a pain in the ass these condor mounts are very iffy especially when you're trying to raise it if you know stock Height and all that stuff you probably find but I'm kind of messing with it which makes things even harder I mean, this literally brake booster job has turned into a motor mount install job again. Like, it is that brutal. But finally got them in place. I got the starter hooked back up. And you can see my fins are just barely clearing the thing. This front fin, which I didn't even realize was in the way as well, is hitting it. But, like, well, it's not hitting it. There's, I mean, there's like a millimeter. So I might try to, like, jam sandpaper in there. I'm not messing with it anymore. Uh, the fins that really matter are clear. So that'll be fine. But now it's time for me to hook back up the throttle cable, hook back up the, um, put back in the, the master, actually. I got to put the new seals in that. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to finish this bad boy today. Finally got time. I got a day to do this. So we're going to wrap this E30 up and take it for a drive. So I just got to finish up. Uh, I got to put back in the master, the seals, hook all the stuff I took out, and then uh, we should be good to go. <laughs> All 
right, so now we're ready to go ahead and put the reservoir back in. I cleaned it out a little bit. Uh, I got the new seals in here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and lubricate those with brake fluid really fast. I don't know if you need to, but every time, I, you know, every time you're doing like an oil change or whatever, they always say to lubricate the seals with whatever fluid they're mating with. So I'm just going to go ahead and give these a little brake fluid. I know I should be wearing gloves, but uh, I'm out, so... I'm gonna have to just wash my hands after, but that should be good. I gotta get the clutch line on there first, and I got it the wrong orientation. There we go. All right, we're gonna fill this thing up now. It doesn't sit all the way flush with the seals, but it doesn't pop out, so I'm guessing there's a lip. I can't remember what they looked like, but I'm guessing there's a lip that it catches in, so I don't think it matters if it's all the way down. So let's fill this up, and I guess we'll see almost right away if it leaks. Maybe not right away, but. I feel like the brakes should be bled. Like, I feel like they need to. But I also feel like since I never pushed them, the fluid that's in these lines is in the lines and there's not really much air that got in there. There might be a little, and that's what I mean when I say I probably should. Uh, the clutch itself I think is fine because this is just kind of the drip line, not the drip line, but the line from the reservoir that lets the fluid in. But the fluid in the system should stay and no air should be introduced there. Uh, so I'm guessing that this is kind of just bleeding itself when I pour this in. It's going to fill all those air gaps because I never pushed anything. So I think we'll be all right. Um, you know, I'll probably know right away if it feels weird, but um, I believe everything's hooked up. So I'm gonna hit the brakes and see if anything leaks. I really hope, I really hope this feels better than it did. That would mean it, it worked. Oh yeah. Wow, okay, I, <laughs> now that feels normal. Um, the pedal actually has full articulation of the of the pedal uh, before it was literally with the car off on you would push it a little bit and it'd be rock hard right away and that's how I knew that it wasn't letting the fluid back out it was putting it in 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 never letting it out so that feels really good the fluid level pretty much stayed the same nothing is leaking um, I'm hyped that's good that's a good sign so now I guess it's time to put back on the the elbow and uh, the vacuum hose and then we're pretty much I think we're pretty much done got to hook up the math. Lower this thing, start it up, and then take it for a drive. Fingers crossed, it's all good. I can already tell you right off the bat, the way the pedal feels, I can I know that that shaft was my issue. So I think we're good. But I'm just hoping everything drives good. And uh, it still doesn't have the exhaust. I still don't want to rip it, but I'm going to have to because it should feel a lot better now. It, I, don't, I think I mentioned this in the video already. It's probably getting long, I know. But the car felt held back, like really held back. And that's because the brakes were pretty much always applied. So I'm excited. All right, so I got everything finished up and I backed it out and I noticed that the pedal was pretty much going to the floor. Um, like, the, it would stop, but only when it hit basically the end of its travel. Um, and immediately I kind of freaked out and I still am kind of scared. But I believe I forgot, and like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I need to bleed the brakes because I had the master out and the lines all unhooked. So, like I said, I didn't think air would get in, but I guess it makes sense that it probably did. So, fingers crossed that that's all it is. I'm really hoping there's not like an issue with the seal between the master and the booster. All right, well, uh, we bled, bled the brakes and they feel better. No brake light. So now we're gonna go on a test drive. Hopefully all is good. I'm excited. All right, so the brakes are fixed and they feel very good. And the car feels a lot more like open. Before, like I said, it felt like it was being held back. That's because all the brakes were applied the entire time. So we're just gonna go cruising around, make sure everything's good. I'm probably not even gonna film it because it's too loud. It's really annoying. So we'll see you guys when we get back. Should I do a second? Yeah. Oh, God. It's 
thing has yet to ever uh, get washed. I cracked my oil pan. I thought that was for me. I got scared. Look at this old ass gas cap. Four dollars. Oh. All right, she's getting some '93 in her for the first time. I don't know, this car's been in, with the same fuel tank of gas since I bought it six months ago. It's in the woods. <laughs> it's on air, it goes up. No yeah. That's the only way it'll drive it. It's the only way it'll drive. It's got air suspension? Yeah, you wanna see my trunk? Uh, kinda. All right, I'm a very happy man. We got the E30 back, the brakes operate perfect, they feel amazing, they stop good, everything about the car is perfect except for the fact that there's no exhaust. That should be getting done, I think Zach will be free in the coming week, so expect a video on that. Um, super stoked. I, I got pretty discouraged for a second there when the car, uh, when I finished everything up and it had no brake pedal feel, I forgot about the bleeding procedure. Luckily that fixed it, but in the process of that, the back, uh, dry, the back passenger side caliper wasn't bleeding. There was no fluid. We were wondering what was going on, what was going on. I pulled out the bleeder, turned out it was just rusted, it was really dirty. So I cleaned that out, got that working, bled all four corners, so we got fresh brake fluid in her, and she rips. The car feels way different then it did, it feels way quicker now. I mean, it actually kind of boogies, so I'm stoked. I can't wait to take you guys for our first drive on this once I get the exhaust. Like I said, when we were driving, it's not even enjoyable to watch, it's so loud. So stay tuned, a couple weeks, we'll get that exhaust done. I am stoked, finally got working brakes. Thank you guys for watching, I know this was kind of long, and I know I said I was gonna post this last week. Got really busy again over the weekend, had to visit some friends and stuff, so didn't get that done, I'm sorry. But it'll be out Monday, and then hopefully I'll have a video for you guys later this week. We'll see what I want to film. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.